Let's do it. I'm using a dual voltage MIG welder today, but I'm plugged in the 115 side on a 20 amp breaker. I'll be doing two separate welds in this video. The first one's a simple outside corner joint, and the second will be using the back side of that to do an uphill fillet weld. Let's do it. I'm using cold rolled steel today, so there is no cleaning required. 18 volts, 196 inches a minute with 035 wire. The settings I'm using are a good bit lower than the recommended settings for quarter inch, but I just kind of want to see if a slower travel speed and working that arc to where it, it kind of plays on the leading edge of that puddle will still get decent penetration. I'm kind of going for that MIG-like TIG look with the ripples. I usually would weld a little bit hotter than this, but I just want to see what this does. And there will be a cut and etch test at the end once the other side is welded. So we should be able to see if it got penetration or didn't at the end. These are the settings again, and I am plugged into 115 volt on a 20 amp breaker. If you want to see what comes with this welder, just go to weldmonger.com. There'll be a link in the description. Before we move on to the uphill side, let's just watch this again. It was so quick. I want to make sure to emphasize a couple of things. I'm using that little technique because I want to keep the arc up toward the leading edge of the puddle. And I want to keep the stick out length short. That's the distance between the arc and the contact tip. That really affects amperage. And I'm keeping an eye on that, that root of the joint. And I want to flow the metal down into that root of the joint and the cut and etch test will tell me whether or not I was successful or not with these low settings. Now after that cools down, we're going to weld the back side of it uphill. I want to make sure to get penetration, so I bump the wire feed speed up a little bit. Not a lot, just up to 212 inches a minute. And before I get started, I want to clean that nozzle out a little bit. The best way to do that, MIG pliers are real helpful. They also call them whelpers. These are the strong hand brand and they're, they're pretty good. You don't want to dump a bunch of spatter, like a ring of spatter into your weld midway. I'm going to be using this little upside down V kind of technique because it plays the arc onto that leading edge of the puddle and usually works. This might not be the best technique for looks, but it always has worked for me as far as getting penetration on an uphill weld and kind of flattening out the weld. Whatever technique you use for uphill short circuit MIG, it needs to be a technique that plays the arc onto the front edge of the puddle so that it bites in, especially if you have any mill scale at all. And this is cold rolled, so it's pretty clean, and I don't have to worry about penetrating through a mill scale coating. But with short circuit MIG, you still need to use a technique that plays that arc to the front of the puddle so you don't get cold lap or lack of fusion. The last thing you want to do with short circuit MIG welding is turn the settings way down just, just for the sake of looks. You want to have enough heat, enough wire feed speed so that you can get good penetration. Doesn't matter what a weld looks like if it breaks. So we'll cut an etch now. That's always helpful to do right after you weld something while the puddle's still fresh in your mind. With a decent polish, the etchant reveals the difference between the weld nugget and the base metal, and you can see exactly where the weld metal penetrated or if it didn't. I don't see any lack of fusion in this one. This little upside down V technique that I use in this video today, the reason I use that is because that is the very first video that I ever posted on YouTube. 15 years ago now, 15 years ago, I look at it sometimes and I just cringe, horrible. The resolution was horrible. I used a little pocket camera that I bought off of eBay for maybe $100 and it, it was a low resolution camera, but it was all I had. And, but I look at that video and I just like, oh, it's bad. But the thing is, it was necessary. It was necessary to do that so that I could then start getting better and, and, make, and learn how to make better videos. And I guess the lesson in that is that um, sometimes it's just worth it to get started. Just do it. Just start where you are with what you have to work with and just really, really commit to improving every day. And um, as far as videos go, that, that worked for me. If I'd have waited until I could afford a better camera, if I'd have waited until I went to videography school, if I'd have waited until this or that, uh, I don't know if I ever would have got started, and if I didn't get started, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have 600 and something videos done by now. But that's the lesson. That's the lesson. Uh, start where you are, 
with what you have to work with and work hard. Hey, see you next time.